unang panel para sa araw na ito sa ating komperensyang Martial Law at 50 kasaysayan at alaala ng pagbalikwas. Ako po muli si Lawrence Marvin Castillo, uh, guro sa University of the Philippines, Los Baños at uh, kasama po na nag-organisa ng komperensyang ito sa Tanggol Kasaysayan. At uh, muli po tayo po ay naka-livestream sa mga Facebook pages ng Contend uh, at Act, uh, pati po sa uh, Tanggol Kasaysayan livestream sa Facebook page. So kung may mga kaibigan po tayo na hindi kasama dito sa ating Zoom meeting, uh, anyayahan po natin sila na manood ng ating livestream sa ating iba't ibang Facebook pages kung saan ito kasalukuyang nakabroadcast. Ngayon po ay nakatuo ng ating panel sa paksa ng edukasyon na makikita po natin na yung mga papel, yung mga presentasyon sa umagang ito ay may pagtutok sa kung paano ba itinuturo, paano na ipapakilala sa ating mga pedagogical practices ang martial law. So, hindi na po natin papatagalin, magkakaroon po ng tigda 20 minutong Uh, present, uh, ng tigda 20 minuto ang ating mga presenter sa umagang ito at magkakaroon po tayo later ng ating uh, Q&A. So sa mga interesado po na magtanong sa ating mga speakers, uh, malaya po tayo na mag-chat sa ating chat box para sa mga kasama dito sa ating Zoom meeting ng kanilang mga komento o mga tanong at para dun po sa mga naka-Facebook live ngayon uh, nanonood sa ating live stream, pwede po kayong mag-type ng inyong mga komento at mga katanungan na Uh, susubukan po nating i-accommodate pagkatapos ng tatlong presentasyon. Para sa unang presentasyon, uh, ikinararangal ko po na uh, ipakilala ang mag, mag sasalita tungkol sa uh, The Past in the Present, Martial Law Reflections from College Students. So tawagin po natin mula po sa University, University of the Philippines si Dr. Judy Tagiwalo at Joanna Andrea De Leon. Hello, magandang umaga sa ating lahat. Natutuwa ko na maging bahagi ng ikapagunita natin sa madilim na kasaysayan ng ating ikalimampung uh, taon na pagunita sa batas militar. Magsiscreen share ako. May inyan. Dalawa kami magpipresent. Uh, So, nakikita ninyo yung aking uh, PowerPoint? Opo. Okay. Uh, English ito kasi karamihan ng mga student submissions ay sa English. So, uh, the past in the present, reflections on martial law from college students. Ako at si Joanna Andrea Edelion ang mag-present. Uh, How do ca current college students view the Marcos dictatorship? For this presentation, This question is answered by their sharing of images, titles of movies, books, songs, or poems, and the reflections of what martial law meant. The flow would be an introduction, integrating students' views of martial law to the presentation, students' feedback after the webinar, and author's reflection. So I am 72 years old, a survivor of the Marcos dictatorship. I am usually invited to talk about my experiences to students from various schools and universities. I have already come up with a standard presentation on martial law, which starts from my own experience as a student activist when I was part of the resistance to martial law, my arrest, torture, and detention, and the economic, political, and social backdrop of that period. I have also been conscious of underscoring that authoritarian rule characterizes Philippine society even at present. And to call on the youth to oppose historical distortion and the restoration of the Marcoses to power. I usually update this template with new developments and the particularity of the students. My co-presenter is Jo Ande Leon, 31 years old. She has a master's in Asian studies from UP Diliman and has been an instructor at the National University in Manila for two years, teaching Philippine history, life and works of Jose Rizal and the contemporary world. Last September 2021, Joanne invited me to talk to her students on my martial law experience. By then, I thought that it was important to know the students' understanding of martial law before my presentation to make the principle of stand, starting where the learners are more sp specific. I requested her to ask the students to submit an image, poem, song, 
title, movie, cartoons, or anything relevant that for them represent martial law during Marcos' dictatorial rule. So Joe and I will alternate in presenting sections of our paper. I will discuss integrating students' views of martial law to my presentation. She will present students' feedback after the, my webinar and see great her own reflections. And I will end the presentation with my own reflections. We'll start with integrating the students' views of martial law. There were 19 early submissions <laughs> sent to me prior to my presentation, films, songs, um, poems, uh, editorial cartoons, photos, uh, even a quote card. Except for one who believed that it was Marcos underlings who committed human rights violations, and another who was ambivalent about martial law. The others were critical of Marcos and martial law. I started with the image of the cover of a children's book, Isang Habling Papel, which depicted a child surrounding by uniformed men. The book is the story of a child whose mother was in prison for participating in protest action against the dictatorship. The text is from the student, okay? So she has an understanding of the suffering that Filipinos went through under martial on the importance uh, for the younger generation to understand that period. I follow this with a video from Karma, Millennials for Martial Law. This is on the page of Karma, which showed the interaction between former political prisoners and millennials, initially clueless about the torture and human rights violations during martial law, but who were stunned when the stories of torture, physical and sexual abuse were told. The next slide showed the image of Marcos taken when he declared martial law in 1972. This was a student submission. Uh, this was the time when Marcos, according to the student, announced in public that the Philippines will be placed under martial law. I chose this photo not because of the declaration, but because even before martial law, Filipinos were already chained to the hands of the dictatorial president. And for those Filipinos who were the mulat, they knew this. They believed that Marcos' system violated human rights. <laughs> I immediately followed this with three photos of the Marcoses. This is my own during their law occupancy of Malacanang from 1965 to 1986. And their depiction as practically a royal family in a painting commissioned by Imelda. Three students' submission after this highlighted the cruelty experienced by the people during martial law. So one of them chose Decada Setenta. Uh, originally a book of uh, uh, Luwalhati Bautista, which became a movie. The movie shows the strict implementation of the curfew, the physical abuse that was dealt to the protests and the people who are against the constitution. <laughs> the movie also entails the struggle with the Filipinos, especially within the families. So, yeah, and then this one, I was happily surprised by the student who submitted uh, a photo of the sculpture Pieta. So, and how the student relates this to how the parents of the Filipinos of fallen victim to the martial law felt. And then this is the quote card from Edward Snowden, when exposing a crime is treated as committing a crime, you are being ruled by criminals. And uh, a student associated this with the student activists who spoke out against the Marcos regime. After these three contributions by the students, I shared with them photos and stories of martyrs and heroes of martial law period. So we all know this, Lorena Barros, Jim Jim Carino of UP Baguio, Makliing Dulag, the iconic murals uh, during the protest actions after the Aquino assassination, the all men mural and the all women mural, then the Ateneo men for others. Other images and text shared by the students reflect the understanding still of the brutality and reality of martial law. This one submitted a contemporary picture taken when the students, when a lot uh, of uh, young people protested against the Marcos Burial in the Bayani ng mga Libingan. 
I want this picture to be an OA opener to everyone that we should know the things that are right and martial law is not one of those. So the other one, I sorry. Two submitted uh, films, The Kingmaker, uh, the documentary on Imelda Marcos and ML, um, the, the martial law movie uh, starring Eddie Garcia about a retired general who was one of the torturers during martial law. And then the editorial carton from the Philippine Free Press and the student said, I chose this photo because it shows how the martial law is cruel to the Filipinos. Uh, the martial law stomped to the human rights of the Filipino citizen. They don't have the right to speak and act. Women during martial law were abused and exploited by the soldiers. After the student submission, I shared the Amnesty International figures on human rights violations during martial law to show the extent and magnitude of human rights violations during those times. Okay. Then there were submissions relatively new to me. One is the poem, Apo on the Wall. Uh, I, I, and he said, I chose the poem, Apo on the Wall, because I remember the grade 12, 21st century literature tackled this poem, which is about martial law. This is about a perspective, a child with his father, a picture of someone hanging on the wall, and that's Apo. This poem represents the life during martial law, especially to the children during this time. I googled it, and it revealed that while most interpretations of the students posted online focus on the evils of martial law, there were others who absolved the dictator. One wrote that poem made me feel contented because the people in that time were not disciplined. Were disciplined. The people have very high regard for the authorities, and they show their loyalty and respect to them to the point that they would fear the authorities. Of course, I also felt angry and pity because what people have experienced before, because they don't have freedom to do what they want. And their way to discipline the people are torture, mur murder. So that's why uh, these reasons made them scared. So again, the ambivalence is there. Then there is the song, which I have the third before, and I think many of you uh, of my generation. It is by a band, a, a Pretty Reckless. It's a house on the hill. So he said, I chose this song because the house on the hill is symbolizing government, etc., etc. And he ends, they abuse their power. This happened during the Marcos era. They abuse this power and authority given to them by the Mar Marcos to get away from their crime. Almost all the blame goes to the leader. Sadly, these mistakes had taken over the good deeds Marcos did for the country. While well, the student realized that martial law brought about the evil that martial law brought about, he attributes this to the men under Marcos and absolves the dictator of command responsibility. Another student uh, expressed ambivalence about martial law. This is an editorial I found which I think can best describe the martial law. There were a lot of stories said during this time and I still don't actually know who or what to believe. However, he continues, there's a part of me who also believes that the martial law is not as bad as the majority perceive. So to initially address his ambivalence or the belief that martial law was good, I shared the following video. Fact check. Life Under Martial Law, which uh, you can download from YouTube. Finally, I used a, a transition to discuss the continuing past, the following explanation by a student. Uh, he, a student chose songs, Utol Butot Balat Sarangola ni Pepe, and said these songs are a reminder that Filipinos of yesterday have successfully resisted the oppression of Marcos regime. And just like what's happening right now in our country, I want them to open their eyes, be involved, and never ever forget the freedom we have fought for so many years. Yun lang po. So, and to continue, I, the continuing past, I related the martial period with the continuing past by illustrating the return of the Marcoses to national power with the blessings of Rodrigo Duterte, by juxtaposing the image of the Pieta with the photo of a mother of a victim of Duterte's drug war holding the dead on her lap. 
I ended my presentation with a series of slides on resisting the Marcos restoration. At present, so you have the t-shirt, you have the Voltis 5, the resurrection of the song Bayan Ko, the movement against tyranny, the quotation from this Montuto, if you see injustice and say nothing, you have taken the side of the oppressor. So that ended my presentation. Now we go to the students' feedback after the webinar. My co-presenter, uh, Joanne De Leon, is going to uh, continue. Joanne? Good morning po. Hello po, everyone. Thank you po, uh, Ms. Judy. Okay, so I'm here to share some of the reflection uh, a summary of reflection from the students who attended the webinar. So let me start. Uh, the students of National University were able to attend the webinar entitled uh, The Past and the Present Martial Law Under Marcos last October of 2020. So after the webinar, I asked the students um, to submit a reflection paper documenting their actions and learnings about the webinar. So a total of 113 students from uh, six different classes were able to submit their papers. And this part of the presentation, I will try to summarize some of their insights, opinions, and overall experience during the event. So most students started off by uh, their papers by discussing their previous knowledge or preconceptions that they have about the topic of martial law in the Philippines. They would also try to narrate information that they have learned from elementary or high school, as most of them only heard about the topic through basic education that they have received uh, from their past schools. So some of my students also talk about how their family members perceive um, the martial law period. And with most family members reiterating positive feedback, such as uh, the Philippines was very peaceful, orderly, uh, lots of infrastructures were built, and the economy experienced growth. So with various information in their arsenal, most of them already formed some sort of opinions or assumptions about the topic. So after discussing uh, their previous knowledge, they start to talk about how the webinar was able to add or change their existing uh, opinions or existing knowledge that they have about the topic. Some of them talked about how uh, facts and stories that was presented in the webinar were able to affirm what they have heard about the martial law, such as violence, killings, and even uh, the real state of the economy during, uh, during the martial law period, with increasing foreign debt that the country has accumulated under the regime. So most students would also describe how the webinar was actually an eye-opener for them, especially those who only knew about martial law through basic educations and stories um, of the family members who were still alive during that time period. And um, a lot of my students as well was also very emotional, okay, so, because they conveyed that they didn't know, okay, they didn't know what was actually happening uh, during the Philippines during those dark times. So they now realize that what was happening in the past is still happening in the present. They were able to point out similarities on how Filipino people were being controlled before and how they are still being controlled today. They were able to find similarities during martial law period in current day Philippines such as human rights violations, extrajudicial killings, arrest of opposition members, and even the shutdown of media outlets. These realizations showed the real horrors that are happening in Philippine society today as the rights of the people are being trampled on and different institutions all over the country are being corroded to exact better control over the population. And finally, uh, the students finished off their papers with some final insights and realizations about everything they have learned. First and foremost is that how education is very important, especially for their age as they are the future of the country. They also pointed out that they should be more responsible and better fact-finding and double-checking what they have learned from educational institutions as they have noticed how incomplete or contradicting the information they have received from their basic education. Next is that Marcos does not deserve to be a hero and that the real heroes are those who fought for the freedom of the Philippines and they also showed gratitude to the heroes uh, and victims that were lost during the martial law period. And um, lastly, they also felt hope in the strength and unity that the Filipinos exhibited during EDSA revolution to remove a tyrant from, this, uh, from his position. 
the also uh, the students were also able to take their learnings as a reminder to vote wisely during the upcoming elections as they now know the gravity and utmost importance of choosing the correct leader for our country one who is honest sincere and one who has plans and a vision for for the future and the betterment of the philippines okay. so um i'm gonna finish off my part by sharing some of my reflections about the event okay. so the topic of martial law in the Philippines is actually um, a mystery to me, especially when I was younger. Uh, the knowledge of my knowledge of this period has always been from uh, hearsays from family members, um, and also when it was discussed uh, during during the time when I was in school. When I became an educator and was tasked to lecture about the topic, it actually shocked me how much information was unknown to me. It also shocked me. Um, how much information was held when this topic was being taught in primary and grade school. After these realizations, it, uh, it made me feel the sense of responsibility that I had to teach this topic well. Uh, I owe it to my students and to my country as well. And I think that's the reason why I actually invited Dr. Tagiwalo to help me discuss the topic to my students. Okay? So the problem in the, uh, of the Philippines did not end in EDSA. It closed a dark chapter of the country but it surely did not solve the issues that are still very much evident until today. But one thing that cannot be denied is that these events sparked a light in the, light, in the hearts of the Filipinos. It gave them the strength to stand up and fight against injustice and gave them to, uh, the courage to fight alongside fellow countrymen. Finally, uh, I grasp especially now the importance of learning the history of the country and educating the youth as citizens so they can stand up and say, Never again to the killings, never again to human rights violations, and never again to tyranny. Thank you. Thank you, Joanne. I'll end our presentation with my own reflections. I learned a lot from the contribution of the students uh, and their understanding of the martial law. Many of these examples were taken from the internet using uh, martial law in the Philippines as the keywords. Hence, a number used free martial law, free press, editorial cartoons. They are familiar with contemporary movies, uh, um, documentary martial law, which underlines the importance of film in exposing what really happened during that period. The poem Up on the Wall, new to me, personally appears to be a reference for graduate students but can be interpreted either way as a condemnation of Marcos or his exoneration. The House on the Hill was a revelation too, as I was unfamiliar with the song and with the musicians. I guess if we ask them, the students, to come up with songs during their time that for them can be re related to martial law and dictatorship, we, at least my generation, will be able to learn more about the music of this generation and what they're thinking. So these uh, lyrics uh, come from the House on the Hill. Uh, just Google it and, you know, it is a, and, uh, it's a good song. What is striking is the comments coming from several, or the comments coming from several of the students that the misconception they have on the reality of martial law came from teachers and parents. We have so much to do to combat such historical distortions coming from an older generation and state institutions strongly influencing the youth of today. Reaching out to young faculty members like Joanne is an important step to engaging the youth in combating historical distortion a negative historical revisionism. That ends our presentation. And then we say together, Joanne, never, never forget. Never, never again. again. Salamat po. Maraming salamat. <laughs>